Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So if you're a beginner and just learning Android development, this video might be the most important programming video ever for you. Because as you maybe know, I have an Instagram page and there I am regularly asked how to solve specific errors. And most of those errors you can solve with only 10 seconds of Googling. And because I think that many beginners don't know what kind of error, error they even encounter and how they should Google it appropriately, I want to show you this in this video here. So make sure to watch this video till the end. It will save you a lot of time. As you can see, I wrote a simple algorithm here that should just sort this list here. And I deliberately made an error here. So if you're a little bit more experienced, you might find that error right away. But if not, then let's imagine you had this algorithm and you don't know what the error is. Now I want to show you how we can actually find out what the error is and how to solve it. Android Studio provides a tool which is LogCat, which you can find below here. So let's click on that to open it. And LogCat is basically the console for Android Studio. And it is your best friend when you want to find errors in your code. And inside of LogCat, it shows all the logs that have something to do with your app. So on the left, you can see your current selected emulator. So you listen now for all the logs that are on that emulator and that have something to do with your application. So in my case, it's com.androiddevs.tutorials. So that is this package for this particular app. So we only listen to the logs that come from this app. To the right of that, you can see a little drop down menu that says verbose. And at that drop down menu, you can select the current log level. The log level is just kind of a filter for your log messages. So it determines which messages are shown in that log window here. And verbose means that it simply shows all available log messages. Debug means it only shows log messages related to development. Info is just for messages for regular usage. And it's always the same that if you select a log level, for example, info, then all the info logs are shown and all the logs of the levels below that. But for log level info, the debug logs are not shown, for example. But if you select that debug log, then the debug log messages are shown and all the log messages that belong to the levels below. So in general, you most likely um, need that debug filter or that error filter if you only want to filter for errors. I will just keep it at verbose here to just show you all the log messages. And currently we don't even have any log messages because our application is not running. So let's change that by clicking on that play symbol above here. And now you can see a lot of log messages appear here that have something to do with our application. 90% um, of those are actually unnecessary or um, don't tell you anything that you need to know at the current moment. But the important part for us is, as I told you, I deliberately um, made an error here in my algorithm and it throws us a big error message here. And if you're a beginner, you might just think, what the fuck? And that was the same that I thought when I was a beginner, but it's actually not that hard to understand if you once learn how to read that messages. And I think not, not many people who make tutorials really show you how to um, solve your errors and how to read those messages. But it's really important because when you are when you're a programmer, then you encounter errors all the time. And you must learn how to understand that um, understand those error messages and how to Google for it. So let's start to decrypt that huge error message. In general, such an error message is shown to you when somewhere in your program an exception is thrown. And that is exactly the case here. So if we take a look, first it tells us fatal exception main. That doesn't really help us. Then which process that exception appeared in doesn't help us too because we know that it appeared in our app. And if you read the next line, it tells us runtime exception, unable to start activity and so on, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't even help us too. But after that, the important part starts. 
which is java.lang.arrayIndexOutOfBounds exception. And that is actually the exception that occurred here. And it tells us that we wanted to access an, an index of an array or of a list that didn't exist. So you can see that um, length of our list is six here and we wanted to access the sixth index of that list. But because the length of that list is six, the highest index of it is five. And because of that, the error is thrown here. And if you scroll down a little bit, then almost every time such an error message is shown to you, there are some blue links here. And the blue links are actually those links that are important for us because they belong to our project. The gray links belong to the Java framework or the Android framework, and we cannot see the implementations of those classes. So let's take a look at the bottom blue link here, and you can see it will lead us to our onCreate function in main activity. So let's click on that, and it will um, move the carriage to the line where that error occurred. But in that case, it just tells us that the error occurred in that sort list function, and it doesn't tell us where exactly in that sort list function that error occurred. And to let Android Studio show us that, you have to click that top link, because if you um, take a look at the left of that, it tells us that this link will lead you to the sort list function in line 21. So let's click on that, and it um, takes us to the exact line in which the index out of bounds error occurred here. And now we know that the error must have appeared inside of that if statement because that is the place where we access the list at a specific index. And now we have to think by ourselves why that index out of bounds error can appear here. So let's check which indexes we actually access here. We only access indexes that are related to J. So let's take a look that J goes from zero to list.size minus one. So our list is has the size six, so it goes from zero to five. And the highest index of the list is five, and the highest number that J can that, that J can be here is five two. And if we access that index at the highest number that J can be, so list at j plus one, so at five plus one, that means that we access an index here that is um, six, and that list does not have an index that is six. And that is actually what the error message here told us, that we wanted to access the index six in that list that is only that has only the length of six. But let's say you don't know right away what that particular exception tells you, because in our example it's pretty obvious that the error index is ju just out of bounds here, but there are many exceptions that don't tell you right away what the problem is. And in that case, you just want to copy that exception type, go to Google, Google it, click the first Stack Overflow link here, and scroll to the answer. And most of the times there's just a good guy that explains it in very detail. And I think in Stack Overflow, the explanations are mostly just much better for beginners than if you look into the Java or Kotlin documentation, for example. So let's actually jump back into Android Studio and solve that error. The error was that we accessed the index sixth at that um, position here in the code. And to solve it, we just need to go to list.size minus two. So we don't, the highest index that we access here in that um, square bracket is and maybe you've noticed that I sorted the list and then I wanted to print it afterwards. That is the way we did it in the Kotlin Jupyter Pro series because in that console we needed to print something all the time with the print line function. But now if we want to use logcat of Android, then the print line function works. So if I just run the program here, Then you can see a lot of log messages. And here's actually our print line function that just prints the lists in sorted order. 
But a better way to actually print something into a logcat is to use the functions that are created for that logcat. And in Android, in the Android framework, you can just use log dot, and then you can just select the current log level you want to log that message on. So D stands for debug, E for error, and so on. You have I here, info, verbose, as I just explained those different levels before. And let's just log something here in debug. That is the most common um, log level you, you will use. So let's use that. And then you can see it requires a tag and a message. And the tag is just used to um, filter that log. So it will give your log message a tag that you can just search for in that logcat window here. Let's use for that tag main activity. So we know that this log message was locked from within main activity. And after that, we can just print something like, hello, this is our first log message. And if we now run that app, wait a little bit, then Lockhead will reload and show all the new log messages. And here's our list that we are sorted and that we printed with system.out, so with the print line function. And above that, you can see our tag main activity. And it says, hello, this is our first log message. And let's say we didn't find that log message right away. Then we could filter for debug log because we logged that um, message at the debug level. So let's click that. And now it only shows you debug messages, which are still a lot. And then we could click on that search box here and only search for log messages that have the name main activity in it. And then you can see it filters all the messages and only shows us our just created log message here. In general, it is a good habit to use the logging features of Android Studio and log, for example, when particular functions are executed or when they finish so that when errors occur that those log messages help you to spot and to solve those errors. That's it for this video. It's really important to learn what error messages tell you and how to Google them. It can save you a lot of time because you don't need to ask other developers that often because you're able to help yourself. If this video was helpful for you, please comment below and leave a like. Also, if there's something I can improve on, please tell me below. That would really help me. And yeah, see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.